Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this video, I will be briefly explaining what is the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So the type 2 diabetes mellitus is uh, commonly seen in people who are overweight and obese. So this is one of the common cause of type 2 diabetes mellitus. That is the obesity is one of the common cause for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Let's see why obesity, why overweight causes type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now the type 2 diabetes mellitus before uh, diagnosis, it will be in uh, pre-diabetes phase. That means uh, when the person puts on weight, like you know, the person is overweight or obese, so the adipocyte size will increase. As it is shown in the figure here, as the adipocyte size increases, so these adipocytes, they start to secrete uh, adipokines. These are some of the molecules which are synthesized and secreted by adipokines. And these adipokines, they have got endocrine action, they have got parocrine action. So what is the important um, change that is going on here? So some of the adipokines to mention here. So there is an increase in uh, a molecule called resistin. So the resistin, one of the adipokine that is coming from adipocyte, its uh, levels will increase and also there will be increased release of uh, retinal binding protein 4. So this retinal binding 4, uh, protein 4 and uh, uh, resistance so, and also there is a decrease in the uh, release of adiponectin. So what is uh, and also there are so many other uh, molecules that are secreted and uh, synthesized uh, by adipocytes. So all of them along with the tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 6, so what all these molecules will do. So increase in resistance, increase in retinal binding protein 4, increase in tumor necrosis factor alpha, increase in interleukin 6, all of them what they will do. So they increase uh, inflammation in the adipocytes and also they are going to increase uh, insulin resistance. So there is an in increase in insulin resistance whenever adipocyte size will increase and also because of the decrease in adiponectin, adiponectin normally it uh, you know, maintains the insulin sensitivity, it improves the insulin sensitivity. Now as the adipocyte size increases, adiponectin um, molecule secretion decreases, resistin will increase, uh, uh, retinal binding protein 4 will increase, all of them will contribute to insulin resistance. What exactly uh, happens in the insulin resistance? So this insulin resistance can be seen in the adipocytes itself because adipocytes they need to respond to insulin thereby GLUT4 transporters can will come back to the membrane it will be translocated to the cell membrane so when the insulin resistance is going on in the adipocytes adipocytes decrease uptake of glucose so well, because GLUT4 are not available over the membrane and also same phenomenon can go on over the skeletal muscles which are of course the major consumer of our, our blood glucose. So the, the GLUT4 transporters or the skeletal muscle is not expressed properly because of this blood glucose will stay in the blood itself. It is not taken up by the adipocytes not taken up sufficiently by the skeletal muscles. So because of this what happens blood glucose rises. Now, this is what we refer it as insulin resistance in brief. There are a lot into, the, uh, lot into this, but uh, this is what it is in brief. Now, what happens to a uh, person here? So, the insulin resistance itself do not cause type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, the signs and the, the blood glucose rising more than 126 uh, uh, milligram per deciliter as a criteria to diagnose diabetes mellitus insulin resistance itself do not cause diabetes, type 2 diabetes mellitus, but it can cause a pre-diabetes condition. So, then what causes insulin, uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus? So, the insulin resistance, it will be uh, predisposing to glucose toxicity and uh, impairment in the beta cell function. So, the impairment in the beta cell function is the one which will lead to type 2 diabetes mellitus which will be uh, basically it will occur after insulin resistance. Okay, let me explain you uh, that with the figures that I have drawn here. So in the X, I, I, have show, I have drawn two figures here. In the first figure that is uh, fasting blood glucose levels in milligram per deciliter. And the second figure is the blood insulin levels uh, percentage of normal. Now, 
on the x axis in both the figures years of diabetes so it will zero means that's the diagnosis of diabetes in both the thing and uh, minus 5 years minus 10 years and uh, on the right hand side 5 years 10 years 15 years of diabetes so that is also there in the figure down here now now we all know that uh, less than 100 uh, milligrams of fasting plasma glucose is considered as as a normal fasting plasma glucose so that is what is written here so 100 milligram and uh, less than that so below this is a uh, normal fasting plasma glucose and also the blood insulin levels 100 percent so anything below that is uh, less than uh, normal and above that is uh, more than the normal uh, insulin levels now let's see what happens so what happens uh, five or ten years before the diagnosis of diabetes in a person who is going to develop diabetes mellitus, consider person has got uh, BMI more than or equal to 25 uh, uh, kg per meter square, so considered as uh, overweight or going into obesity. So what happens in these people who are overweight and obese, so where the adipocytes are bigger than the normal, so what, what will happen? So, so the blood glucose levels in them, so they sl it slowly rises because there is insulin resistance in overweight and obese uh, people. So this insulin resistance, what exactly is the insulin resistance? I have explained that before. Now how that will behave with the blood glucose levels? So as the insulin resistance uh, uh, going on here, so the blood glucose, it is uh, appearing more than the normal range. So slowly there is a rise in the blood glucose. But not really the uh, uh, abnormal level where you are categorizing this as uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus. But clearly it is uh, more than normal. So it is somewhere in uh, between. So slowly it is rising and uh, as it is rising, see, it is within this 126 milligram per deciliter. So this blue line, the graph that I am writing here, so it is uh, blood glucose, fasting blood glucose level within 126 milligram per deciliter. You know that uh, any blood fasting plasma glucose more than or equal to 126 milligram per deciliter is considered as a diagnosis for type 2 diabetes mellitus or type 1 diabetes mellitus uh, for that matter. So why uh, now insulin resistance is there but blood glucose is still within 126 milligram per deciliter. So clearly it is uh, more than normal but not really going beyond 126 milligram. So what is keeping this blood glucose within that 126 milligram per deciliter? And if you look into that, so when the person is overweight or obese, so as the insulin resistance is going on, so you are, uh, as the blood glucose level is also increasing more than 100 milligram, so your beta cells will respond to elevated levels of blood glucose here. And what it does, it is going to secrete more and more insulin, more than the normal insulin being secreted. So your insulin uh, graph will go something like this. So there is a compensation from the beta cells of pancreas by secreting and releasing more and more insulin into the blood. Thereby, as the insulin resistance is going on here, so that is compensated by increased levels of insulin. Now, this compensation, it's going to fail at some point in time. Why, why, why that fails? Why the beta cell impairment occurs? So there are few theories which will explain why there is a beta cell impairment. One of the theory is a glucose toxicity or glucotoxicity. Now, what exactly glucotoxicity is? So the glucotoxicity means whenever this blood glucose is more going more than 100 and is there in less than 126 milligram there, so this constant rise in the blood glucose level for around uh, 5 to 10 years before the diagnosis of diabetes. So that glucose itself is going to go and uh, glycosylate some of the proteins or the cell membrane of beta cells of pancreas giving rise to what is called as advanced glycation end products. So what the, because of this damage what happens beta cells will impairment will occur beta cell will start to fail and when the beta cell fails means when the beta cell impairment starts during that time insulin secretion from the beta cells will also decrease so that means there will be drop in the insulin secretion so it will go on something like this so as the drop in the insulin secretion occurs so now you see what happens so there is a rise in the blood glucose level so this is what happens so that's where the diagnosis of diabetes starts so this point here this is where the diagnosis of diabetes starts. So that's what is zero here. 
So the because by this point uh, blood glucose goes more than 126 milligram per deciliter under fasting condition. That's the diagnosis of diabetes, and that happens when the insulin secretion from the beta cell will decrease because of the impairment in the beta cell. So that means insulin resistance itself do not cause type 2 diabetes mellitus, but it is the uh, precursor. It is the uh, condition. Insulin resistance is the condition which will predispose a patient to get into type 2 diabetes mellitus because in, when there is a insulin resistance, there is constant rise in the blood glucose and of course it is compensated by increase in insulin secretion but that compensation do not go on forever because at some point in time your beta cells will, uh, pancreas will fail and there will be drop in the insulin secretion that's why there is rise in the blood glucose level. So this is what is the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes mellitus. I hope this video has helped you in understanding what is the main pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes mellitus. If you like this video, give uh, a like, press that like button. If you have any question, put that question in the uh, comment section below. And also for uh, more videos like that, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video.